All right, so welcome to uh, Pharmacology. Welcome to Bioscience. Bioscience, uh, we are going to start our lecture today. Uh, this is lecture 14, sorry, lecture 14. And we are going to get to the, uh, to the part of the ear. Okay, the ear. All right, everybody ready? We get yes. it? Okay. Yes. All right. So we was talking about the eye in the previous lecture. And just to remember a few things about the eye, you have the eye have three layers, right? Three layers. So three chambers and three layers. So that is how you can start the description of the eye. Now let's talk about the ear. The ear, how many layers we have in the word ear? We have three layers three letters. So three is going to be a very common number of all the, in, uh, when we are going to talk about the anatomy of the ear. So to start, for example, we have the outer ear, we have the middle ear and the inner ear, that is three. Then we have here, this is the outer ear, middle ear and the inner ear that is here. So in the middle ear, we have again, three bones, malleus, we have the incus and we have the staves, three. Then we have here the inner ear, we have another three, that is the cochlea, the vestibule, and the semicircular canal. So see, basically everything is three. So that is a way that we are going to uh, check our, our ear uh, anatomy today. All right, all right, so let's get the start. The division of the ear, ear is going to be it, it's very difficult to know what time of the fetal age the ear is going to start working. Uh, actually, there is an evidence that music and the voice of the mother make some movement of the eye. That is giving us the idea that the, the fetus is listening in very early stages. All right, so the ear. The ear is going to be divided into the outer ear. We have here the outer ear, one, we have the middle ear two and we have the inner ear three so where to where where to where is going to be the outer ear the outer ear is going to be here all this up to all this area up to this membrane that is the eardrum or the tympanic membrane tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane, okay? So all this, what I just uh, mark here, that is the outer ear. So where they go, the outer ear? The outer ear go from here, what we call the pina, the pina, pina, the pina, what is the pina? I go into the row, what is the pina? The pina is all, is the ear, all the ear, the outer, the ear, that is called the auricle or ear, auricle or pina are going to be all this structure. Okay? So that is the pina. Then we have the ear canal. This is the ear canal. If you see the ear canal, this is very important. We are going to talk a lot about this right now. The ear canal. This is the ear canal. And then we have the tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane. Tympanic brain membrane is like eardrum. It's in an exam we can put you as an eardrum. You need to know that it's called tympanic membrane. It's like a like a, a drummer, right? Drummer. So basically, there is a membrane who literally is vibrating during the sound, the sound wave. All right. So talking about the sound wave, how is going to make this vibration? It's going to be like this. The sound wave is what we call a mechanical and longitudinal wave, mechanical. So that means that the, the wave sounds are coming here and they are going to hit the tympanic membrane. If each time that the wave is arriving, it's like the waves of the ocean, they're going to hit the, the, the shore of the, of the beach, right? The, the beach, the sand. So each time that is the waves coming into the sand on the beach, each time is that is exactly the same how the sound waves are coming into your eardrum. 
So it's like you are not, you, you are wave sound, a wave sound. This is the wave sound. This wave sound is like when arriving to the eardrum, it's like you are knocking the door with your hand, your fist. So each wave of the ocean, each wave of the sound is going to make heat, is going to hit the tympanic membrane, and the tympanic membrane is the eardrum. It's like a drum, right? And they are going to actually vibrate. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Now, here we have the uh, how many components so we have in the outer ear. In the outer ear, we have one, the pinna. Number two, the ear canal. And number three is the, the eardrum or tympanic membrane. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Yes, tell me one thing. Why do you think we have ears? This one. Why we why we don't have why we have ears? Why we don't have the ears like this down like this? Or why we don't have the ears up? To like channel that. sound. Wait, what what? To channel the sound waves. Exactly, channel the sound wave. Uh, Miss O O, let's do some experiment. Okay, let's do experiment. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, Miss O O, everybody, please. Now, experiment. So I'm going to show you why that we have the ears. So now, can you hear my voice very well, Miss O.O.? Yes. Can you hear? Now, can you do this with your hands like this? Can you, how you can hear me now? Yeah, I still can hear. You can hear what, better or worse? Um, this a little bit worse. No, you cannot say that. No, it's not so clear, yes. no, don't cover your ears. Don't cover your ears. You go like this. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, can you hear me better or worse? Can you the hear same. me? Yes. Uh, okay. I think we need to change the uh, example. <laughs> All right. So, Miss, oh, oh, look at this. If you do this, your ear like that. So, do you see? Oh, when you want to hear something, you don't do this. Yes or no? No? No. No? Okay. <clears throat> so, Miss O, -O she wants to give me a hard time today, I guess. All right? But what is the purpose, Miss O, -O is this. If you put your hand like this, right, like that, like making like the ear bigger, right? So what you are doing is to collect, as Mr. Daniel say, is going to collect the sound wave. It's oh. like you have like a, like how you call, like no, a, no, no, no. How you call that, uh, Marilyn? Like a, when you pour, uh, what is the name? Like a cone. Like or what? Like a cone. Or like a, a cone, cone, yes, like a cone. Yeah, like a cone that is going to collect the fluid or, or the fluid and go through a tube, right? So that is what is doing the, uh, the the ear. The ear, so you see, for example, the dog. The dog when, means, oh, the dog do this, right? You hear some sound, like this. Another sound, they go like that, right? They put ears like that. Why they think, why do you think the dogs are doing this? To when get more. Exactly, they are going to direct, it's like a radar. So they saw, they hear a sound, they, they direct the, the the ears to that area to try to collect all the wave sounds better, to hear better. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. So that is the function of the of the pinna, of the pinna. Now I want you to do something. Uh, Marilyn, can you do this, please, like this? Not like that, but like this. Okay. And then go all the way horizontally, horizontally, back, 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 back. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't push too hard. No, don't, don't hurt yourself. Keep going back, 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 back. I don't see your face. I don't see your face. No, the other way. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going back, 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 back. Okay, what do you feel? Your ear, right? <laughs> that is your ear, oh no? Yeah, I feel my ear. 
<laughs> All right, so that is the beginning of the year. So that is the normal setting of the year. So if you go horizontal here, all the way back here, and this is the beginning of the year, that is the normal set of the, the how is the position, the location of the year. People who have some syndromes associated, especially with mental retardation, the set of the year, this point start below. If you see here, for example, Down syndrome, Down syndrome, they have mental retardation. The set of the ears are lower than that. Okay? All right. So the setting of the ears is having a proportion. You don't have ears here, right? We don't have ears here or ears here in the neck. So we have the ears in always in certain position. Okay. So do you know that people over 60 years old, the ears are going to grow? No. No? So you say, okay, Miss O, so that's very kind of reassuring. Yes, you will see. Do you notice that people, when they get older, they have like a big ear, like a mouse? Do you notice that? Yeah, ears and eyes. Or ears yeah, and ears nose. And eyes, right? The ears are going to make, look bigger, correct? Like a mouse, right? Big mouth, right? So do you notice that, Miss O? No, Miss O didn't saw anything today. Okay. All right, so what happened? What happened is this. The ear, the pinna, is actually uh, formed by cartilage and skin. Skin and cartilage. So that's why you can mold it, fold it, fold it, whatever you want, right? So when you get older, the cartilage are going to reabsorb, are going to get smaller. It's going to get the, re the cartilage of the, of the ear is going to get smaller. And the skin that is covering the cartilage are going to expand. So it's not a real. Uh, it's not that in reality you you are having, and in la your ears are going to grow. No, your ears are not going to grow. Uh, the skin is going to expand and looks like your ears are bigger, but it's because of that reabsorption of the cartilage. We can be that. Yes. Okay. Another thing. Uh, what is the? Uh, what uh, we are going to talk about the. Just to finish that part, Erin, are you okay? Miss Erin, you didn't sleep, looks like. Huh? You didn't sleep well, right? Uh, just had a trouble. Like, then okay, okay. That well. Okay. If you don't feel good, just call me, let me know what to do because I want you to be okay, all right? So I don't see you completely, uh, completely, completely uh, focused because you. I don't know. All right. Yeah, let me know, please. Okay, if I can help you, uh, let me I'll know. I'll let you know. Sure. Okay, so here we have uh, the ear or the pina. Pina or article. Okay, so here we have some structures that you uh, minimum need to know about the anatomy of the ear. So the ear are going to have here, this area, everybody can uh, touch your tragus. Tragus. Tragus, tragus. This is important. Tragus, tragus. Touch your tragus. Okay. Then we have on the opposite, a little bit uh, more posterior here, something similar as the tragus. If you see here, that is called the antitragus, with G here. Antitragus. This is G here. It's not Q or whatever it looks. Tragus. Tragus, tragus and anti-tragus. We give you that? Okay. Yes. Then the other structure you need to remember is the helix. The helix is going to be all this. All this is the helix. The outer border of the ear, the helix. The helix. The helix. And here we have the anti-helix. Try to recognize that in your ear right now. I'm going to do myself. This is my helix, and here, the, mo the next folding, here, that is the anti-helix. So we have helix and anti-helix. We have tragus here, tragus, 
and then here the anti-tragos. Tragos and anti-tragos. Tragos and anti-tragos. Yes. 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 Okay. So, I want you to write down this. I want you to write down that we have a sign, a sign that especially is coming in kids of less than four years old. Kids, that they have a very common problem that is called the middle ear infection. Middle ear infection. Middle ear infection. So, why I'm talking about that right now? Why? Because you can determine that one of the signs of middle ear infection, you want to know where is infection, this outer, middle, or inner, right? So you want to know if that is middle, one of the indicators is this. I want you to push your tragus. If you push your tragus slowly, soft, that is going to trigger out a lot of pain on the patient, a lot of pain. And that is what's called the tragus sign, tragus sign. That is a sign of middle ear infection. Okay? Yep. Okay. All right. So now, let's keep going with the next uh, uh, part. The next part is going to be the ear canal. The ear canal. Look at this. This is the ear canal. Number one, the ear canal are going to have some glands that produce the cerumen or wax, right? So it's not going to be talked about right now. And can you see this? What is this? Look, looks like a holes and white. What is this structure? Is it the skull? The skull, right? And which bone is that? This bone is that temporal bone. Temporal bone, the temporal bone. Remember I was telling you the temporal lobe have the hearing? Yes, the ear canal is going to basically perforate. It's going to be like having a tunnel through the temporal bone, temporal bone, temporal bone. You okay with that? Yes. Yep. Okay, so talking about the ear canal, all right, so let's think about this. Ear canal, ear canal. Now let's talk about the ear canal. What is the main function of the ear canal? To conduct the wave sounds to the eardrum. But the ear canal has something special. Something special is the direction of the, of the ear canal. The direction of the ear canal. Probably, you probably didn't observe, or probably you observe, or actually kind of... Uh, prototype of behavior of everybody doing that. But you see the doctors and some nurses are, when they take the stethoscope, the stethoscope, they are playing like this with the stethoscope before they put it in the ears. Do you notice that? No? Somebody do it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So why is that? Because the ear canal have a direction. The ear canal, you cannot put the the ears of the of the stethoscope like this, perpendicular or, or, or parallel. You need to, because if you do that, they are going to touch the skin. So you 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 don't want to see hear yourself. You're listening to your to yourself with the skin. So what they are doing is doing this. So they fix the ears of the stethoscope anteriorly like this. So instead to go like this, they go like that, oblique, like a bull, like a cow, like something like doing like this, right? So that is the the direction of the ear canal, and that's why you can you need to put the stethoscope in the same direction. So it's like your ears are not the ears of the stethoscope are going to put it anteriorly like this, okay? So you have a stethoscope close to you. Somebody have a stethoscope? No? Oh, you have a stethoscope. No? Eric, no stethoscope? I have one in my truck. Okay, so let's let's try to find it. Uh, I have one upstairs, but I don't want to cut it. Yeah. Give me one second, Dr. G. I'll go now. Sure, sure.
So, and that is important, huh? because otherwise you will not hear anything. So that is the tip of the, actually, the stethoscope. The stethoscope, you need to just, there is, you can, you can basically rotate a little bit the, the ears, or, but anteriorly. So the stethoscope is going to be like this. So you need to do the earphone like that. So you put it like this. We don't have three dimension view, right? So let's wait on Mr. Daniel. It's going to help us. But Marilyn, is that clear or no? This is important, huh? Because yeah, it's clear. Okay. Why? Because it's not if you if you don't do that, means oh oh, you will not hear anything. Or you will hear very low. There you are. Okay, Mr. Daniel, can you show us, please? There you are. See, it's very good. That is the way. Better than I. Okay. And then what we are going to do in order to make it beautiful. Everybody got it? So that is the way. Very good. So you need to have the earphones like a little bit oblique towards the front. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, Dana, can you move your, your, the, to show them how they can rotate like this? See? This this is a, a Lipman. They're fixed. You can't rotate them. Oh, it's a fix? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. So everybody's clear on that? Miss O, yes. you, you look a, a skeptical. You're not a skeptical? No? You believe me? Miss O. -O. Miss O, -O, are you there? Hello. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, Miss O. All right, so let's keep moving. So that is the ear canal. Okay, so we have here the temporal bone. We have the ear canal. We have the pinna with the helix, anti-helix. The tragus is not showing here, and this is the anti-tragus. We have the ear canal that is going to funnel. It's a funnel. That is the word, the word, funneling going to funnel all the wave sounds that are going to collect the wave sounds and they are going to guide it towards the ear canal so they are going to be concentrated and they go and hit the tympanic membrane so that is the outer ear canal so how many components we have three the pinna the ear canal and that tympanic membrane that is where it's going to end the outer ear of the of the body, uh, on the ear. We gave you that? All right. So now, let's go to the to the second part that is the middle ear canal. The middle ear canal are going to draw, are going to paint it like this. Let me see here. Sorry. Ear, the middle ear canal. This is the middle ear canal. No, the mere ear, mere ear canal, the middle ear. Middle ear is no mere ear canal. I'm thinking about this. There is a, a tube here. This is a tube here. So all what I draw or paint, that is the middle ear, middle ear. All right, so is that clear? So don't forget this tail. Huh? This is a, a channel again. Okay. So now, uh, this station tube will have uh, very important function, but let's start with the beginning. So here we have, here we have three bones. These are bones. Uh, where are bones? They are bones. All this one bone here. This is one bone. We have another bone here, and the last bone here. How many bones we have? three bones again see everything is three right so this first bone is always you need to remember that is the malleus the malleus this is the malleus this is the incus because they have the shape of the incus where you the horseshoe in the past right that was doing horseshoes right so when they hit that is the incus malleus malleus is like a like, sounds if you see here look like a hammer like a hammer. So because the malleus is going to be something like that. That is the malleus. 
the incus are going to be something like this something like this and the uh, stirrup is the last one a stirrup is like a handle like this like a handle so that's why they get the name from the shape of the of the bone so these are three bones three bones three bones three three bones 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 are bones that are in the middle ear these bones are going to be the malleus are going to be the incus in that order and the stapes so you can remember with the word miss 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 malleus incus stapes malleus incus stapes so which which is in contact listen to this question for the exam which is in contact with the tympanic membrane is the first the malleus the malleus is in contact with the tympanic membrane is that clear okay yes yeah. Yeah. malleus is thank you is the same to say hammer that is annoying you need to know this because it's coming they can ask you hammer or malleus incus or ambil and steps or stirrup. So these are the names. They, unfortunately, they, they call either way. Sometimes they call melio, sometimes they call hammer, incus, ambil, steps, stirrup. So you need to memorize all these names. Melios is related to the hammer because the shape, right? Uh, incus similar as the ambil, and the steps is similar to the stirrup. Another way to remember is from all this hammer, ambil, uh, and stirrup are going to, you can say, you can do miss has, right? Miss has, if you want. But another way is melios, with the only one from these three three words is going to be having an M, is the melios, melios. The other one who has the uh, incus, the only one who have the N, N, Incus is the ambil, ambil. And the only one who have a T, a T, stapes is the stereo. Okay? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we okay with that, right? Okay. All right, excellent. So now, what are the functions of these, of these uh, uh, bones? These bones, please, question for the exam, all together, they can be called, or each of them is going to be called an ossicles. Ossicles, ossicles. Ossicles are the three uh, middle ear bones. Okay? The ossicles. So, okay, name the ossicles. Miss, right? Or has. What is a stapes? An ossicle. What is incus? An ossicle. What is melius? An ossicle. What is hammer? An ossicle. What is ambil ossicle? What is stirrup ossicle? Okay? And just remember, here we have the contact with the first H is, the con is, is after the tympanic membrane. So the tympanic membrane is coming here. Tympanic membrane is coming with a wave sound. It's like knocking, knocking the door. This is going to vibrate, vibrate, vibrate. And what happened? The hammer is going to vibrate. And the hammer is going to make vibrate by by contact the uh, the uh, uh, the hammer the ambil or the uh, state uh, no ham, what is ambil oh my god uh, yes the hammer stirrup no no it's me uh, it's going to be the what is that incus incus there you are. Incus or ambil are going to make vibrate the incus or ambil. And then the incus or ambil are going to make vibrate the stirrup or the stapes. And this is vibration, are going to transmit the vibration through these ossicles. We okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, but what for they are going to have, what is the function? Uh, of these ossicles transmission of the sound but more than that 
you have the sound here coming, 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 coming. Can you see the height of the of the of the wave sound? They're going to go to the uh, to the to the hammer uh, incus and um, steps. So melios incus and steps. And what happened? Look at this. They are going to poof, amplify. They are going to amplify, amplify the sound wave. How much they are going to uh, amplify? 20 times more. 20 times more. 20 times more. Okay? Yes. That is the function of the ossicles, of the uh, uh, malleus, incus, and stapes. All right, so now, when you get older, when you get older, you cannot hear, there is many causes, okay? Many causes. Now, one of the most common causes is that these bones, the ossicles, the malleus, incus, and stapes, they, they need to articulate. So they have some kind of movement between them. There is an articulation there. So do, you can start guessing, right? So an articulation there. When you get older, you have what we call arthrosis all over your body. We have that hardening of the of the joints. And this is not going to be the exemption. So they are going to be more rigid, the articulation between, the, especially between the stapes and the incus and the incus with the melios and the melios with the next one that we will see like later. And this vibration is not going to occur effectively. So the amplification are going to be small, uh, uh, not so so big. So you start to hear less. Is that clear or not? Okay. Yeah. Everybody got it? So it's clear. Going... Yes. Okay, clear. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, next scene. This middle ear, as I mentioned here, this middle ear, all this middle ear is a cavity. It's a cavity. This cavity, what is in around what is around the, 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 the ossicles? All this area that you see here in dark, this is literally a space. There is an empty space, a space, there are empty space. This empty space is where the vibration is going to occur with the ossicles. Now, when you have, for example, if you notice, if you notice the the speaker of your of your of your car, Miss, oh, you like music in your car? Yes. Okay, so probably you'll be very louder, right? A boom, 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 boom. Sometimes, right? Okay. So if you know, if you see that, you're going to put your hand on the speaker, right? If you put your hand on the speaker, you feel that it's pushing you. Boom, 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 boom. Correct? Yes. Now, if you put your hand, if you put your hand closer to the speaker and you press a little bit, that boom, boom, boom is not going to be so strong anymore because you are reducing, pressing, you are reducing the vibration of the speaker. So the sound starts to go down. Okay, so that means that every time, every time that the, it's doing, you, your car is doing boom, 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 right? With the music too loud, it's, the, the sound is pushing air away, pushing air away. But if you block that free tra uh, transmission of, of the sound wave moving air, the, the sound is going to be diminished. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. If you go here in this view here, every time that this is vibrating, every time that this is vibrating, they are moving uh, some air because with the movement of the vibration, boom, boom, it's moving, moving air, right? And this air, they need to escape all the way here. If that is blocked, this ear, these uh, uh, ossicles are not going to have as much vibration as should be because this is a cluster and this is increased pressure and the pressure are going to 
basically like holding the ossicles to prevent them to vibrate. Okay? This, this channel that you see here that belongs, question for the exam, to the middle ear is called the eustachian tube. And where they go, this eustachian tube, this eustachian tube, you need to remember that, are going to go to the pharynx, pharynx, to the pharynx, to the pharynx, to the pharynx, to the pharynx. To the pharynx. Now, when you are, for example, uh, swimming, oh, let's go, first of all, to, if you go and climb uh, a mountain, if you climb a mountain, when you climb a mountain, so the pressures are going to be different at different altitudes. So when you are traveling, don't you don't you feel that your ears are going to be close, like all of a sudden? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Right. Yes. And what you do in order to hear again? You're going to close your nose, close your mouth, and push air, and boom, or drowning, or opening, or talking, or drinking water. The ears are going to open again. Do you feel? Do you feel that? right so yeah. what happened happen here is that the pressures here in the eustachian tube the changes of pressure from one place to another are going to make are going to make this eustachian tube to block to close to collapse they should be open all the time but they are going to collapse and that is the moment that you cannot hear so you blow with, through your mouth uh, positive pressure and the station tube poop, is going to open and your ear are going to start here normally. Why? Because that air, escape of air, is needed for the vibration of the ossicles. If the ossicles are actually not able to vibrate because there is a blockage of this, the amplification of the ossicle will not happen or very poor amplification. And you hear is like you are hearing under the water. You go to swim. When you go to swim, you drink a lot of water, right? So sometimes you well, not all the time, but you drink here and there a little bit of water, and the water goes to your throat, to your throat, and through your throat, the water starts to stack here. And you see that people doing this, right? Or jumping in one foot, right? All right, in order to make the water escape go out from the station tube and it's open now boom you can you you can hear immediately uh better you okay with that yeah yes another scene there is more all right so there is more uh the most common infection most common ear infection that is NCLEX already yeah the most common ear infection is the middle ear infection. Why is that? Somebody uh, can give me some, some clue? All right. So this is connected to the pharynx, correct? As I mentioned, correct? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, kids, kids, especially kids less than four years old, are very common, four or five years old. And what happened? They have a lot of, many times during a year, a cold, a viral infection, right? A cold, simple cold. Yes or no? This virus, where is located? In the pharynx. They're coughing, sneezing, coughing, and sneezing. So the virus somehow found the station tube. And the virus start to climb here, this pathway. And they go where? They reach the middle ear. And the middle ear start to get infected. So you you decrease your uh, audition, your uh, your hearing, right? You have pain, and you're going to use what sign? The tragus sign. That is a sign, an indicator that is a middle ear infection. You okay with that? Yep. Yes. All right. Yeah. Well, so many things about the middle ear, right? All right. So you have that. Uh, please just watch the videos, watch, this is very important because there are many questions in English about ear, ear infections. So we are already clear 
on the outer ear, middle ear. And now let's go to the inner ear, inner ear. In the inner ear, we are going to, are going to draw all the inner ear. All this is the inner ear. If you see here, the inner ear is immersed, immersed or submerged, whatever you want, into the temporal bone as well. So all this the, is the inner ear, inner ear, inner ear, inner ear. Okay? Okay, so the inner ear, that is more elaborate. So please, I want your attention here. Let me see if I have another picture here. There you are. So can you see this image? So look like a snail, right? This is the snail. Look like a snail, right? The snail is something like this, right? Right? So this area is this. This is called the cochlea. Question for the exam. Cochlea. I'm going to write it down better. Cochlea. Cochlea. Uh, cochlea is this. This is a cochlea. Cochlea, 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 cochlea. Then here we have, in the other side, we have Three, again, oh, by the way, look at this, three. One, two, and three semicircular canals. Three semicircular canals. This semicircular canal are going to be something, one is vertical, the other one is perpendicular, and the other one is oblique. So, basically, that is the, trip, that, the position of the semi-circular semi canals. Why is that? There is a reason for that. I'm going to explain you that in a few moments. So let's go to the semi-circular canal. Semi-circular canals are these. These are the semi-circular canal. Semi-circular canal. Semi-circular. That, those are the semi-circular canal. So, but there is something in between here. This something in between is going to be this area, this. I should put in green, but anyhow, this area, the cell compartment, and that is the vestibule. The vestibule. Vesti vestibule is like that? Vestibule, spell me, please, correct me. Vestibule is like this, like the entry of a building. I think that's right, Dr. Chief. All right, thank you. The vestibule. The vestibule is basically in between the semicircular canal and the cochlea. Okay, so that's what I want to mention is like you are in a, a very modern, should be a, a building like this, a very modern building. You have uh, actually like a circular floors here and we have like a three towers, right? So this could be a nice building. Anyhow, so we have, when you go to the building, the whole building, you go first of all to the vestibule. From the vestibule, you are you decide to go to the towers, means the semicircular canal, or you go to the right or the other side to go to the cochlea that is more rounded. Okay, we got it. So we that is a building I call the building of the inner ear. All right, we okay with that. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so yeah. now this is what is a little bit tough to explain. So please, I want your, your attention very careful, okay? All right, so this structure, this structure of the semi-circular canal and, uh, and the vestibule and the cochlea, those are not, from inside, they are not solid. Actually, there are channels. If you cut here, it's like, a, if you cut here, semi-circular canal is like a, a channel here. If you cut here, that cochlea is going to be like a channel inside, like a tunnel. If you cut the vestibule the same way, it's going to be like a channel. So everything is like a like a tunnels under the ground. So you will see here that this is a tube, a tube, a tube with a lumen with a space inside. The vestibule they have a space inside. It's not like a solid. It's not. It's not solid. So. 
Outside is solid, yeah, but inside is like a tunnel, a funnel, like a channel. Do you carry that? Okay, so now, this space are actually share, are going to communicate the space of the vestibule, are going to continue with the space of the semicircular canal and with the space with the cochlea. So now, what is inside that fluid? Inside that fluid is going to be a fluid. Inside that channel is going to be a fluid. This fluid is called the endolymph. 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 These endolymph are going to be just all here fluid. All is going to be with fluid inside. So all these structures, the semicircular channels, and the vestibule are going to be filled with fluid. And the cochlea as well. The cochlea as well. All the cochlea are going to be with fluid inside. We okay with that? Yes. 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 Yeah. So it's like you have a bottle of, of water. Marilyn, you have your water, water, bottle of water, right? So that is basically what is happening with the same circular canal, the vestibule, and with the, with the cochlea. So what is that fluid? That is called the endolymph. Endolymph. Don't forget that. Endolymph is not blood. It's a clear fluid. A clear fluid. All right. So now let's go to the big slide here. There you are. So if you see here, uh, we have the, the borders are going to be white, right? So it's the outer. But what is in red here is trying to show you what is inside. So it's be very basically occupied by fluid that is called the, and are going to be called the, the what? The, the endolymph, the endolymph. We okay with that? All right. So now, why is it important to talk about the endolymph? There is some endolymph here, they said. No, they don't put anything here. Okay, endolymph. This endolymph. Endolymph. All right. So now we are ready. We are going to put together everything. All right. I want, I want you to have a uh, homework. Are uh, you going to have a plastic bag? A plastic bag. I don't know, it's not that common um, water beds, right? Water beds are not common right now anymore. So no. it's not popular. So, all right, so you have a plastic, a plastic bag full of water, full of water. And then you are going to put your hand on one side. And then you're going to do this in the other side, like this. What happened? The water starts to move, right? Like the waves, all the way, and they are going to hit your hand. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. If you have like you have water here, you hit the water here, and the vibration is going to travel to the other direction. Yes or no? Yes. Right. Like tsunami. Right. I don't know why it's coming to my head. Tsunami. I don't know why. Okay. Anyhow, so that is the wave sounds that are moving. All right. I mean that is the water sounds. All right. So what happened with this? And actually, I want to pay attention to this, please. Now, I want you to think about that this is full of fluid inside. Fluid inside, fluid, 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 fluid. Everything inside, huh? inside that you fluid, 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 fluid. So now what happened? What happened is the sound wave is coming. Sun, oh. To, to like. The sound wave is coming. Sound wave, 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 sound wave. They're going to make vibrate the tympanic membrane vibration, making the vibration are going to vibrate the malleus vibration. Then the malleus make vibrate the uh, the incus. The incus start to vibrate. The vibration of the incus are going to be transmitted to the uh, uh, this is the incus, sorry, and they are going to be transmitted to the stapes, to the stapes. These stapes are going to be in contact with the vestibule. Another question for the exam. So what is connecting the, uh, the, the inner ear with the middle ear is going to be in between 
the steps and the be, uh, vestibule. Steps and vestibule. Steps and vestibule. The vestibule, okay? So that is the connection. This vibration that is being amplified 20 times in the ossicles are going to hit the inner ear, is the vestibule. And the vestibule, what happened, is contain fluid. This fluid is going to make vibrations of the water all over, of the fluid. Vibration, vibrations. It's water vibrating the waves of the fluid that is going to be as a consequence of the mechanical force of the of the ossicles. You okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now let's continue. Here in these ossicles, in this ossicle, in this ossicle, ossicle is going to be let's let's make it like this. It's like a rounded, like a rounded, like it's a labyrinthic, right? So Let's here in the surface, on the inner surface, on the cochlea, of the cochlea, cochlea, are going to have some cells here. Cells, 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 cells. are the lining of the cochlea. Cells, 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 cells. So I'm going to draw some cells here. These cells are going to be something like that. And these cells have the nucleus and something important. They have a cilia. They have a cilia. They have a cilia. These cilia are going to move, right? And how they are going to move? When the, when the sound here is the ossicles are hitting the inner ear, they are going to make vibrations traveling all the lymphatic and they are going to come over these cells, like this. And this is going to make move the cilia. So the movement, the waves of the endolymph caused by the movement of the ossicles, that is a mechanical force, mechanical force from the ossicles, are going to be transmitted to the endolymph of the inner ear. So these waves of the fluid are going to make move the cilia of these cells. It's like you see an algae, algae on the ocean. Do you see algae on the ocean? The ocean is moving and the algae, algae under the water are moving, yes or no? Yes. Right? So that is exactly what happened. And this mechanical force, mechanical force over the cilia, these cells are going to transform that mechanical force into electrical impulse. This is a mechanical force moving the algae, moving the cilia of these cells. These mechanical force are going to be transformed into electrical impulse. This electrical impulse, this electrical impulse this electrical impulse that the cells are located inside the inner ear, the cochlea, are going to be transmitted to the, the nerve of the hearing, hearing nerve. This yellow here, you see there, that is the nerve, is actually the cranial nerve number eight. Number eight, that is, and this name, look at this, please. Do, you need to know this name. Very simple. Is the vestibular cochlear nerve. Simple. Why simple? Because vestibular cochlear nerve. There you are. So is the vestibular, vestibular, is the vestibule, but you call vestibular cochlear nerve, vestibular, cochlear nerve. And that is the cranial nerve number eight. You want to remember how, how to remember? You have a face here, nose, ears, nose, whatever. And the ear is going to be like number eight, number eight, okay? 
So that is the vestibular cochlear nerve. We can be that? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. These cells, and the, just to put the strawberry in the cake, these cells that you see located in the cochlea are going to be called the corti organ. Corti organ. The corti organ. Corti organ. Corti organ. What are the corti organs located in the cochlea? What is the function of the corti organ? Is to uh, convert mechanical force into electrical impulse. And where they go? They go to the cranial nerve number eight, or the vestibular cochlear nerve. nerve. Cranial nerve number eight. You okay with that? Yes. All right. So, all right, so that's good. That's good. Now, um, all right, so let's go to the last part of the ear. And for that, I need the help of, let me see. Oh, I, I was bothering too much oh, today. So let's go to, uh, to Marilyn, please. Marilyn, Marilyn. Yeah. Okay, so where is your uh, wa uh, water uh, bottle? Bottle of water, what is your, okay. Uh, all right. Can you take the, the label out? Is possible? Excellent, very good. No, but with water inside. <laughs> I want water inside. Okay, all right. All right, so show me in the middle of the camera. Take out the label, take out the label completely. Okay, thank you. All right, show me the bottle. All right, look at that. Tell me everyone, please, what is the, the label the, the label of the water? Horizontal or vertical? The water. Horizontal. Horizontal, right? Uh, Marilyn, can you make it a little bit oblique, the, the bottle? Oblique, make it oblique. Oblique. More oblique, more oblique. There you are, more oblique, more oblique, more oblique. There you are. Tell me, what is the level of the water? Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Horizontal, right? No matter what position you put the, the bottle, it's going to be horizontal. Try, Miss Marilyn, put in another position. Whatever position you want. There you are, vertical, right? I mean, horizontal. Always the water is going to be horizontal, yes or no? Yes. Right? Okay, yeah. thank you, Miss Marilyn. Okay? No, one more time, one more time. Show me your bottle, please. Show me your bottle. All right, two bottles. I want two bottles now. Two, two bottles. Excellent. Show me the two bottles. The other one's empty. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, show me the two bottles. All right. So now, so the two bottles are going to have water and always whatever is moving the bottles are going to be horizontal, correct? Yes. All right. So now look at this. The fluid that you have there, Marilyn, is the endolymph. And the bottle itself is the semicircular canal. So it doesn't matter whatever you move, the water is going to be always horizontal. Yes or no? Right? If you move your head to the left side, the, the bottles, the semicircular canals are going to go oblique. But the always, thank you so much, Marilyn, but the level of the water is going to be always horizontal, right? Right? Yes or no? Yep. So yeah. that is a reference. So that's why if I, if I, if I, if you close your eyes and I, I put you upside down, upside down, with your head down and the feet up. You know what position you are in that moment. If you lean to the left or you lean to the right, the these semicircular canals, the or the endolymph are going to be horizontal always, and that is a reference that are going to send information to the brain 
to tell you the position of your body. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So, yeah. did somebody practice box here, boxing? You like to hit, uh, Miss Marcel, you like to beat like this, no? Sometimes. Oh, okay. All right. I've so, for 20 years. Oh, you, you, yeah. All right. So, Daniel, so tell me, what happened? People, uh, boxers, they, they like to hit on the ear, right? Yes or no? Yeah like an equilibrium disturbance exactly so show me your bottle marilyn please with water now uh, beat beat the bottle with your fist beat see what happened with the water so the reference are going to be multiple at the same and many times so that is going to help you to lose your equilibrium so that's why they hit on the ear so the boxer with a long run, they have like a lettuce instead of ear, right? So big, big uh, artichoke there because everybody's hitting on the ear because they try to make loose the balance because the same as circular canals are going to do this. And the water are going to send a random a chaotic information to the brain so the body cannot keep the balance. That is going to help for a boxer to gain, to, to win, right? You okay with that? Yep. yep. All right. So now uh, let's finish this part. And here we have the semicircular canals. And there is one more I need to tell you. Is here we have three, three of them. One is totally vertical. The other one is totally horizontal. And the other one is oblique. Yes, we have three of them. And that is covering all the three dimension of the space where you are right now. Interesting, right? And all of them, they have the lymphatic and the endolymph, the endolymph. Changing position are going to change the level of the endolymph. And that is going to send basically the information to what we call to the vestibular nerves that is part of the cranial nerve number eight, the vestibular nerve. These vestibular nerves are going to send information to the position of your body. So what is doing the ear is going to just not hearing, but is going to help you to give information of the position of your body, the position of your body. You okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right, so here we have the last thing I want to go over is this. Here we have, if you see here, this is the middle ear and this is the inner ear. But in between we have here like a bone, right? It's a temporal bone, very thin layer, right? Temporal lobe, temporal bone. So this temporal bone are going to connect the vestibule with the stapes through a window here. This, there is a window on the temporal bone. This window is called the oval window. What is the oval window? The wall, the wall, in the wall you have a window. What is the, what is the wall? The wall is the temporal and the window is the opening called the oval window. You okay with that? And that is when the stapes or, or stirrup are going to be connecting with the vestibule. The mechanical forces are going to pass through that. Okay, that's all what we have. We okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's let's do the the recap. The outer ear ear outer ear includes the pinna or article is the external auditory canal or the uh, ear canal and the tympanic membrane. So it's called the eardrum. The middle ear have three tiny bones called malleus or hammer, incus, ambil, or stape or stirrup. And we have, don't forget about the middle ear, the eustachian tube. The eustachian tube. The eustachian tube. Okay. Then we have the inner ear, we have includes the cochlea and that semicircular canals with a vestibule between them. Easy to remember now, correct? 
Yes. The outer ear collects sound waves and directs them through the ear canal. Pina called auricle the outermost visible part of the ear, which collect collect the sound waves. External auditory canal or ear canal directs the collect sound waves toward the eardrum, the tympanic membrane. So we already talked about the helix, anti-helix, the tragus, and the anti-tragus with a sign that we was talking of infection for middle ear. You press and trigger out pain. Tympanic membrane, membrane that begins to vibrate with the frequency of the sound wave, right? You know that male, male, our boys, they can reach up to 80 waves per second, 80, 80 waves per second. Can you imagine 80 in one second? One, two, three, up to 80. But a woman is actually, they can use it as a weapon. Why? A women, women can reach about 200, so almost three times. They can destroy your tympanic membrane if they want. No, I'm just kidding. But very are three times. So the voice of a woman is much more intense more much actual pitch than the than male. You okay with that? Okay. The membrane that begins to vibrate with the frequency of the sound wave, the vibration of the tympanic membrane get amplified by the structures of the ossicles in the middle ear. Ossicles are the th thinnest, with H, thinnest again, tiniest, well, tiniest or with H? Okay, all right, whatever. Uh, the tiniest, yeah, the accent is right tiniest bone in your body and considered cranial skull bones are considered part of the cranial bones. So we have the malleus look like a hammer, right? Incus, it looks like an ambio and stapes looking like a handle, right? Like a steer, all right? So that is the amplification. So we have here like this, the tympanic membrane amplification 20 times. And that is what they go through the oval window to contact the vestibule that contain the endolymph and all things happen. All right, so we have, as the vibrations pass from the structure to structure, the vibration become amplified. Tympanic membrane, malleus, the first ossicle, incus or ambio, stapes of stero, and they are going to go to the cochlea in the middle ear in the, in the vestibule. They are going to amplify 20 times. Their names are going to Melius M, Hammer M, Incus N, Ambil N. It's the only one who has N. Stapes T, the steer is the only who has T. Now, none of these vibrations will be matter if not for the inner ear or what? No, the vibration would be matter if not. What is this? So is they, they need to, this is not right. So they are going to connect to the vestibule of the inner ear through the oval window. Oval window. Okay, so I need to rephrase that. The inner ear, the labyrinthic compose the inner ear. So let's talk about the uh, labyrinthic is going to be called this. Uh, I need to make it clear here. This is called the labyrinthic. This and this, or this is labyrinthic or semicircular canal. Okay, so that is the labyrinthic, labyrinthic channels or the semicircular canals. It's the same. So this is should be just this means composed by cochlea, cochlea responsible of the sound detection, which looks like a snail shell and three semicircular canals. No, semicircular canals are part of this. It's completely, this is cochlea, one, semicircular or labyrinthic, and number three, the vestibule, period. Semicircular canals responsible for balance and equilibrium, as we mentioned. We have the endolymph, the endolymph that is inside of the cochlea, vestibule, and inside of the semicircular canal, okay? All right. All right. So, uh, all right. So, uh, can you please uh, let's try something just before the break? 
Hey, can you text me? Uh, can you text? Uh, can you mark two two three 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 and mark a uh, uh, text Guillermo par five one nine? Can you do it? What happened? And your cell phone, are you doing that? Yes? All right. So I will do it again. So I'm not going to be able to see you guys. All right. So that is the first question. So you're going to go to uh, a mark to two, two, three, three, three. And then you send a text, Guillermo Parr, exactly as it is. And then you're going to answer the question. The obstacle that gets moved by the vibration of that impanding membrane is. Who is in, please? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to answer because, okay. So somebody can answer. Doctor, do you use it just a text message or? Text message, yeah. Oh no, no, wait, just a moment, just a moment. No, 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 no. I think you need to mark poleb.com in your browser. Um, I texted Doctor G. Do you, do you see it? If someone texted. Uh, I think you need to you need to go to poleb.com first slash Guillermo Par five one nine. Yes, mark mark this poleb.com slash Guillermo Par five one nine. And then you need to, I guess, to text Guillermo Par 519. And there it is going to be 2333. Let me see if I can do it myself. Paul, go to your browser dot com slash Guillermo Guillermo par five one nine yes I send that oh no this no What happened? It's possible to do it or no? Somebody is no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. No, 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 sir. All right. You put agree. You put your name, any name you want. You put A. You you put Angel. You put Dog, Bird, whatever you want. Anyone. You put Bob or whatever. And then continue. And then I'm going to go back. So I have the answer. See, can you see that question? So I'm going to answer. It's different than the one that you have on your screen that you're sharing now. Yeah, it's asking, um, what does the outer ear include? What is what? What does the outer ear include? That's the first question on the poll EV browser. Oh, there you answer. The outer ear includes. Mm -hmm. 
What, who, who answered Melius? Who uh, Okay. All right, so outer ear include a tympanic membrane too. All right, so next. Can you see that? Yes. The obstacles that get moved by the vibration of the tympanic membrane is. Excellent, there is one, what else? Nothing, no, oh, three, okay, excellent. Next, the tube that connects the ear to the throat is excellent, excellent, excellent. The function of the ossicles is to excellent. Everybody got it, four, excellent, four already, you get, very good. The next. The structure of the inner ear include this except. Okay. All right. Excellent. Next. The part of the inner ear that contains the endolymph is. Excellent. The part of the inner ear that produces electrical impulses in the auditory nerve to detect sound is. The part of the inner ear that produces electrical impulses in the auditory nerve. Uh, All right, so, I, so that's that's is okay to um, to me. Listen, the the semicircular canal, semicircular canal, the vestibule and cochlea, all of them they are going to turn into electrical impulses, because the cranial nerve number eight, the vestibular cochlear, they have two components: the vestibular and the cochlear nerve. The vestibular receive information through uh, from the semicircular or labyrinthic cha channels. So the answer in this case is going to be all of the above. Okay, you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's it about the. Let me see. That's all what we have. In the ear. How about the ear? Do you like the ear? Do you learn about the ear today? Right? Yeah. How much, we, how much we how, how much we heard of, we knew about this and now how much we know. Right? So tell me, the poll is, is okay? We can do it still doing that or or, or it's uh, too much yeah. less. Okay. <laughs> So it's going to be a little bit more interactive in that way. All right, so now let's go and have our lunch break. And I'm going to give you, we didn't have break, so I'm going to give you uh, 35 minutes, okay? So at 12.30, we come back. Okay. okay. Any question, Miss uh Oh, question, no, question? No. Okay, no, Miss. No. All right, see you then. Okay, see you. See you.
Hey guys, we said uh, twelve thirty five, right? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay, guys. All right, so we will talk about something really important and really interesting, and uh, this is one of my super favorite, and I'm sure that you have experience with people who have infections, who have some problems on the bacterial, bacterial proliferation, right? So uh, that is what we are going to talk now. So we will talk about the virus, we are talking about bacteria, and how we are going to make a big frame about this uh, and the importance. I'm going to give you some nursing considerations as well, and that is uh, what we are going to start doing right now. All right, so let's get the start. Okay. All right. So. The first part is going to be talking about the micro, that is the microbiology portion of bioscience, okay? All right, so here what we have here is, uh, it's, I put it this slide, and this guy, this is a kind of a selfie of this, of this bacteria. This bacteria is called the Escherichia coli. Coli. It's called by short the E. coli. E. coli. This E. coli, and you will learn, you will understand now why we call this a gram negative bacteria. Gram negative bacteria. And you see here this bacteria, it's very nice bacteria, right? Look at that. They have like a flagella here, like it's big cilia, the flagella, that are going to just move, move, move. That is going to be used as a locomotion. And can you see these spikes here on the bacteria? This is the bacteria. These spikes are the ones who are getting attached, attached to the mucosa of the, of, the, of the tissue. It can be any tissue. The most common is going to be the urinary tract. Urinary tract. Uh, saying that, we have that this bacteria, the E. coli, gram-negative, is the most common bacteria for UTI, 
the urinary tract infection are going to be the E. coli. And we are going to understand all the details about that in a few moments. All right, so let's get started. Here we have, uh, first of all, microbiology. Microbiology is a study of the microorganisms. So anything that you cannot see, uh, organisms that are actually so tiny. So for example, you have, I will tell you, the maximum uh, capacity of the eye to visualize two dots that are close to each other are going to be one-tenth of one milli millimeter. So one-tenth. If you go to your ruler and you will see one centimeter, and then you go for each centimeter, we have 10 millimeters, pick up one millimeter. That millimeter divided in 10 parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten 10 parts. So that is the maximum ability of the eye to visualize something. Smaller than that, actually, you cannot see what is there. Okay? All right. So this is uh, from all the cells on the body, from all the cells of the body, the largest cell on the body of the body is going to be uh, the ovum. Ovum. The ovum. That is the largest cell in the body. This largest cell in the body are going to measure one or one tenth of a millimeter. So this cell, the ovum, is you can be able to see with your bare eye. So mostly we do a small uh, microscope with a small augmentation, and you can see the, the whole ovum. So ovum is the largest cell. All right, so the ovum, the largest cell, are going to be, a, for example, we have one tenth. That is going to be a, uh, one red blood cell is going to be about the half of an ovum, about the half of an ovum. So that's why it's very, very tiny. You cannot see that. All right. So saying that microbiology is going to be the study of the microorganism. Micro means below or under the one tenth of millimeter. So any organism on that size or less are going to be actually called a micro. Micro. And who, who study that? The microbiology. Microbiology. Okay. All right. So disease. Disease is basically you already know what is a health. Health is actually associated with wellness, right? Healthness, health, and wellness, right? Wellness is the uh, uh, the lifestyle. No smoking. No uh, actually uh, too much coffee or alcohol or drugs. All right. So that is the wellness. Eat properly, right? No Kentucky Fried Chicken every day. Balanced diet associated with health. So health is the absence of disease. So, but it's not like that because you need to get actually uh, a complete idea with the health dimensions, the six dimensions of health that we already talked. So in conclusion, what I want to tell you is that a person is not a disease. So you have uh, you have a, a UTI, you are not UTI, you are a human being. So you are going to be other spheres of your existence that they need to take care of, social, spiritual, etc. Right? And actually, the, in addition, the problem with the, with the system. So what is a disease? A disease, we have a normal range of functions, okay? There is a range of functions of the kidney, of the liver, of everything. So there's a, when this range are too low, below the normal or above the normal, that is going to lead into a disease. So disease is basically an, uh, uh, a poor or uh, impairment of a normal physiological function. So that is a disease. Okay, and what is caused that? Micro, microorganisms, and you remember, the, uh, that is going to be called an infection. So we will see that what is infection in a few moments. All right, so what is disease? Disease, as you read there, is an, in any environment of normal physiological function. Okay, all right. So now, infection. Infection is, I want just to be uh, aware of this. Infection is not just for bacteria. Many people see bacteria infection, but virus, what it is? Virus as well is an infection. Fungus, 
Fungus, fungus is an infection? Yes, infection, fungal infection, bacterial infection, a viral infection, parasite infection, all the parasites. I, this is one of my super favorite. Uh, uh, parasites, parasite, we have two millimeters to actually 20 feet long parasite that are living in our organism, another story. But they're going to impair the function of some systems. And actually, that is what we call uh, uh, a disease. And infection means, listen to that, write down this, please. Infection means basically invasion. You're invaded by a microorganism. This infection means invasion. It could be a fungus, could be a protozoa, could be malaria, for example, could be amebiasis. Could be others in fasciolasis, other are protozoa. Then we have viral infections and we have bacterial infections. So, what is doing when one some of these microorganisms are going to invade us? So, why they invade us? Because they invade just to make a tour or just to take a, a trip and uh, look around. No, they are getting into your body like the hunter and the, and the prey. The hunter will be the microorganism, virus, fungus, bacteria, protozoa. And they are looking for a prey. The prey, who is the prey? The prey are going to be the cells of your body. And these cells of your body are going to be destroyed and the prey have the nutrients, right? So a hunter and a prey, right? So they, the hunter is going to uh, uh, take the prey in order to eat it, right? So to survive, right? Hopefully we'll be see here in dinner, but well, anyhow. All right, so, but this is basically the, the idea. So the, the microorganisms, bacteria, fungus, virus, protozoa, parasites are invading your body. And listen to this. And you feel happy when the, when the invasion happened? No, right? Why you're not happy? What your body is not feeling well? Why is this? Uh, physio physiology, the functions of the systems are going to be altered. Why? Because they're going to destroy cells. They're going to destroy, they're eating your cells inside. So they're eating the cells, the nutrients, the amino acids, etc., are being taken by these microorganisms. So what are happening there and why you feel, you feel uh, uh, not normal? Because you have signs and symptoms signs and symptoms. What are signs and symptoms? The definition is coming later, but the signs and symptoms are going to be, for example, you have more signs and symptoms than others, for example, when the invasion of the bacteria or whatever microorganism is destroying more cells. So the more cells are being destroyed, the more signs and symptoms the patient will have. So if a patient is having very severe signs and symptoms, that means the infection is more severe, right? In that moment, it can change. Do you okay with that? Yes. Okay. And now let's, let's think about something else. The bacteria, talking about bacteria, bacteria are going to reproduce, they are going to reproduce inside your body. Guess what? are going to duplicate the number of bacteria, and you, I want you to give me a conclusion about what I'm going to say now. So think about it. The bacteria, when it's getting into your body, the bacteria, bacteria in average, in average, are going to duplicate their number every 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes. So I have 1,000 1, bacteria, in 20 minutes, I will have 2,000. In the next 20 minutes, are going to be 4,000. In the next uh, 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 20 minutes, I'm going to have 8,000. So they go from 1,000 right now, in one hour, you have 8,000. So it's going to duplicate every 20 minutes. What is that conclusion you can get from that? What you should do as a nurse or the patient, what should be going through? should be going to quick intervention of IV antibiotics. Exactly. The, so if you can tell the earlier intervention, as you said very well, 
are going to be the easy to control the disease. Yes or no? Correct? If you take longer time, the bacteria are going to start multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. The risk at the end of this infection, they can actually uh, compromise multiple systems in your body. And that is called septicemia. We're talking about bacteria, right? All right. So is that clear, please? So what is the conclusion at the end? The early detection or identification and intervention in a patient who are having an infection is the best prognosis. So the be prognosis means results, the best results on the patient. Is that clear? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. The virus, viruses are going to replicate every hour, every hour like a billions, billions and billions of, 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 uh, of viruses. If you have, for example, I don't know, I, I, I'm not in the school, and they cannot see the ceiling, but if you got, if you have, if you make 10 steps, 10 steps, walk 10 steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 steps, that is, the size of a bacteria. A virus is going to be one foot distance. That is the difference between the bacteria and the, and the, and the virus. Viruses are much more tiny, 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 and uh, more difficult to identify. All right, so the red blood cells are going to be basically double of the size of the bacteria, right? So that is about the proportions of these guys. All right, so we have infection. What is infection is the invasion. So and when you invade somebody, you have to have an entry, right? The entrance, what they're going to go inside, they're going to grow and multiply and spreading out, spreading out. So that is an infection. Invasion is the entrance, then they're going to grow and then multiply and then spread out during through the whole body. So the early detection of an infection is going to be the best results, means the best prognosis. You okay with that? All right. Microbes are microorganisms that they, there are many varieties of species of microbes. So okay, that is, give me the, the step to tell you this. From all, and we, we talked about this before, huh? from all the bacteria that exist in the world, so you know, if you put all the bacteria in a scale, if you put all the animals and humans in the other side of the scale, the weight are going to be higher on the bacteria. Can you imagine that, right? So the bacteria are going to, in number and population in the world, are going to be much more higher than all the humans and all actually animals in, in, in the world. So it's a lot of bacteria. So these bacteria, uh, are we in danger all the time? Yes, right? But I can tell you from all these thousands and thousands of different type of bacteria, I need to check how many thousands we have, but anyhow. So thousands and thousands of bacteria that exist in the world, only 1% of them are getting into a uh, risk to invade your body. So only 1% of these bacteria can produce a disease. So that means that not all bacteria are going to need your body to grow, to, to invade, right? Enter, to entry, to enter to their body, to uh, grow, multiply, and spread out the, in your body. So only, yes, 1%. That is very tiny amount. Okay? We can be that? Okay. Yes. Excellent. Uh, all right. So the bacteria... The bacteria is like you and I. The bacteria is like you and I. You are a bacteria. Let's suppose I'm bacteria, you're a bacteria. So do you need to eat? The bacteria need to eat. You need to drink? The bacteria need to drink. You need to poo? The bacteria need to poo. The bacteria need to pee? They need to, uh, they need to reproduce, they need to grow, and they die? Yes. So they make, they make gas like we do gas every, uh, every day? Yes, we pass gas, right? Bacteria pass gas too. So basically, that is a bacteria. A bacteria is going to have all the all the activities that a human or a, a normal person is having. Okay, so they have a need to eat, a need to reproduce. All right, the more reproduction, the more 
sources they need to for food so they kill more cells all right so let's keep moving so we have here the uh one thing i just want to tell you ahead of time this is the e coli look at this e coli very funny huh? very nice. okay anyhow so we have bacteria is a prokaryote so let's do very simple what is a prokaryote and we talk about eukaryote in the past eukaryote 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 is a cell, I'm going to give it like a shape of bacteria, but they have a nucleus. And here inside we have the DNA. So that is your cells and my cells. Whatever cells you have in your body, you are actually eukaryote cells. Because eukaryote means true karyote, uh, karyote, uh, God, eukaryote, eukaryote, it means, it's, eukaryote means a true cell a true, a true um, nuclear membrane. So the, the nucleus are going to have a membrane. And inside this nucleus, they have the DNA. The prokaryotes are going to be, let's see, we have the cell, the cell membrane and we have, we don't have nuclear membrane. There is no nuclear membrane, nuclear membrane. But they have DNA. They have DNA. Yes, they have DNA. The DNA is going to be distributed like a, inside the bacteria and all the organelles are going to be like a chicken soup. So basically, a eukaryos becomes a more organized uh, interior, I would say, of the bacteria, of the cell and the prokaryos are going to be more like uh, not that organized. They don't, the difference is that they don't have the nuclear membrane. We okay with that? All right. All right, so now, here we have bacteria. We have the, uh, we have bacteria, we have the uh, bacteria, it's a prokaryote, eukaryotes are going, protists, we just call our normal cells. Mycotai, mycotai means yeast and fungi, fungi. And this, uh, for example, when you have bacteria infection, the only one, they can, pro, can uh, uh, stop that or cure the disease is with antibiotic, antibiotic. When you have here a, a, a fungus, a fungus or fungal, fungal infection is going to be antifungal infections, antifungal infections. Here we have a virus and the virus are going to be the antiviral medication, antiviral antiviral medication, antiviral. So that means, my purpose to tell you this is that if you have fungi, if you give antibiotic, nothing is going to happen because the only thing that kills the, the, the fungus is antifungals. And the same thing for bacteria. The bacteria, if you have bacteria, if you give antifungals, nothing is going to happen. They need to receive the antibiotics. Antibiotics is for bacteria. Antifungals is for fungus antivirals are going to be for viruses. If you give antibiotic to a virus, nothing is going to happen. If you give antiviral to bacteria, nothing is going to happen. All right, so each microorganism, they have his own treatment. You okay with that? Yep. Okay, so now tell me one thing. Uh, the, the virus very fast. Virus is a living organism or not? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, is a, that is a very common, very common answer. And the answer is that the virus is not a living organism. All right, so now, but a virus is not, I, I'm going to make it very emphasis. Erin, are you there? Uh, a, viral, a, vi a virus is not, a living organism. Okay, the question is why? Correct? Okay, so let's do it very fast. What is, what is considered a living organism? A living organism is the one who can reproduce by himself without any other help. So if you have a bacteria alone, the bacteria will be able to reproduce. Why? because they have a DNA. 
the bacteria have DNA. But you say, wait a minute, but the virus have DNA too, and even more, they have RNA too, right? So what is going on? The, the, the thing is this, a living organism is considered that one who can reproduce by himself. The virus cannot. But you say, well, well, how they repli re uh, uh, replicate? Yes, they replicate. But listen to this. The DNA of the virus is an incomplete DNA. It's not a complete DNA. In order to reproduce the virus, they cannot reproduce by himself because there is a piece of DNA that is missing. Yes, uh, Marcel. Um, they require a host. Beautiful, excellent. That's why, excellent, very good. So the virus need a host in order to reproduce. And the definition to be alive is that you don't need anybody, you just need yourself in order to reproduce. You okay with that? Yep. Got it, yeah, thank you. Okay, so remember from now on, the virus is not a living organism. Okay, Erin, Erin, are you there? Okay, so here we have uh, actually worms, insects, animals, other other ones. Uh, no living since studied under micro, micro include viruses, retroviruses, and prions. Prions is an abnormal protein that is like a machine that are going to replicate, right? But they don't have other characteristics of to be alive. So prions are not alive neither. Retrovirus neither. The viruses neither. So they are not actually considered living organisms. Okay, questions for the exam. Bacteria are a small, unicellular, and independent organisms. Okay, there is no nucleus, but they have DNA that is free floating in that cytoplasm. Let's, I'm reading. They contain a cell wall, important protective properties of the bacteria. So, what is the cell wall? So, listen to this very clear, please. We are talking, focusing in bacteria today. Okay, bacteria they have a cell membrane. Cell membrane, cell membrane, the answer is yes. It's a cell. Bacteria is a cell that have a cell membrane, a cytoplasmatic membrane, or actually uh, are going to be cell membrane or cytoplasmatic membrane is the same. So that is covered by another uh, layer, another cover, and that is called the cell wall the cell wall. So the bacteria, in addition of the cell membrane, around the cell membrane, they have what we call a cell wall. What is this cell wall? This cell wall is basically cellulose. It's basically, uh, it's like a carbohydrate that is very hard. So the cellulose are going to give you the, give the protection of the bacteria, are going to protect the bacteria. Are you okay with that? So we have cytoplasmatic membrane, and around we have another layer that is called the cell wall. Cell wall is not cytoplasmatic membrane. Cell wall is cellulose. Cellulose, the cell membrane, you already know that our main components will be cell membrane components, phospholipids and proteins. Proteins and phospholipids, proteins and phospholipids. That is a cell membrane. In addition, and covering the cell membrane, we have the cell wall that is cellulose, basically like plastic, right? Cellulose. So it's going to be a cellulose that is going to uh, protect the bacteria. We okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, can you answer that, please? Let's do it, this. It's okay. Go to, oh, okay. Excellent. Okay, one, who said true? Give me one, who is going to tell me true? Two, two, three. You're still thinking about A and B? No, that's mine. Um, I'm having trouble with it. Who is this? With, um, logging on or something okay
Okay. All right. So false. That is true. That, I mean, <laughs> false is the a right answer. Most bacteria species on Earth are harmful to us. That is false, as we mentioned. Next. The characteristics of bacteria cells include this except. The, all right, so let's see. The characteristics of bacteria cells include, so what is a bacteria? What is the characteristic of bacteria, right? Except. So they have no nucleus? They don't have nucleus. They have nucleus or not? No nucleus. All right, so the D their DNA is broken into chromosome free floating in the cytoplasm. Yeah, in order to reproduce, they probably they are going to do that, right? Most likely. So A is not the answer because they don't have nucleus. And that is true. So they telling you, read the question. Bacteria cells include. So what is true, but except. Okay? So what could be the answer? Should be none. None. Yeah, none. See, that is a good example that, that we need to read carefully the questions. Okay, you know the answer. Right. Next, which of the following is not considered to be a living organism, but is a study under microbiology? Mm -hmm. I have two. Okay, everybody. 400 percent excellent viruses oh, very good there's no there okay all right so let's talk about the classification of bacteria species and we are going to talk about the uti what time is it please 105 okay so let's get the start here all right so how many of you you had uh i mean no i'm you, not that don't tell me but how many people you know they have UTI, UTI, correct? Okay, this UTI is urinary tract infection. So for this, you need to uh, you need to have, I'm going to give you a little bit of NCLEX here. Uh, well, general thing is about, uh, we have suprapubic pain. When you have urinary bladder infection, it's called cystitis. Okay, so I'm going to go here, that's the moment. When you have a urinary bladder, when you have, oh God, where I am. When you have the urinary bladder, urinary bladder infection, it's called cystitis. Number one. Number two, the most, uh, actually, the signs and symptoms are going to be uh, suprapubic pain, suprapubic pain, or you can call hypogastric pain, hypogastrium, gastric pain. Then you have dysuria. Dysuria means painful during pain during the, the urination. And that is feel as a burning sensation. Okay, so that is basically the, the main things. So now, the most common bacteria is going to be the E. coli. E. coli. Now, so you go to the, you have this dysuria, dysuria, you need to know that, dysuria, suprapubic pain, and it's very suggestive of the E. coli, or I mean UTI, UTI, UTI. All right, so, but 97% of all UTIs are going to be E. coli. So we already know that by experience, experience, by experience, 
experience, this is going to be E. coli. So deep by experience is going to lead you into empiric. Empiric means experience, empiric treatment. Empiric treatment. All right, what is the empiric treatment? The empiric treatment is that when you go to the doctor for UTI, the UTI is very, you have some analysis that is going to make it in the spot, are going to be a UTI, a, like for example, the clinical presentation, the pH, and et cetera, I'm going to mention in a few moments. And they are not, they cannot see the bacteria yet, but by experience, they already know that most likely it's E. coli. So they send you home because it's an uncomplicated uh, UTI, they send him home with antibiotic therapy. They cannot let you go, say, you know what, we need to wait until we, we the cultures are going to come and give the results. No, they don't do that. They give you, in the meantime, treatment, empiric treatment for the E. coli, for E. coli. It can be sulfas, ciprofloxacin, amoxicillin, etc. whatever. So ciprofloxacin, noroxine is the most common. All right, anyhow, so E. coli. All right, so now let's make the, the whole story. I have signs and symptoms of dysuria and suprapubic pain, like a pressure, uh, a, a pressure. I go to the doctor, I, I go to the doctor, they open the office and they, they make me sit down, take my vital signs, and they're going to start asking me what is coming, what is your visit today? So you say suprapubic, you're going to say, I have pain in my lower abdomen, suprapubic pain, and I have burning during burning sensation on the pee. All right. So the nurse is coming, and the nurse are going to give you a jar where you're going to pee. You're going to pee. You're going to pee. Okay? You're going to pee. By the way, nurses can order UTI. Or nurses can order UTI. All right. So that is one of the uh, um, uh, not attribution, is one of the uh, uh, duties they can have, right? So they can order and actually uh, a urinary test. All right, so now they go to the jar, they give you the jar and they say P, P, right? And when they they uh, tell you to P, some people they say P, the first portion of the P, get rid of, uh, put it away, and the second part of the P, put it in, the, in this jar, okay? All right, so now after that, they, the nurse disappear and then go to the lab. In the lab, are going to use a deep stick. Deep stick. Deep stick is like um, like uh, like a small paper that are going to put it here in the urine. This paper, they are going to actually make some measurements. It's a qualitative measurement. Qualitative. Qualitative. So that means that it's telling you yes or no presence or, or no presence or something. They don't tell you how much bacteria you have. You then tell you how much is your uh, number of white cells. So they, they tell you presence or absence, okay? So these deep stick are going to measure the pH of the urine. The pH of the urine, normal pH of the urine is, is, is what? 5.5 to 6.5. So six is the average, is the normal. How to remember that? This is the urinary bladder and this is the urethra. So this is the urinary bladder, six, six, six. That is the pH. The pH, and I'm going to repeat this many times in the future because it's important. The pH of the urine should be a little bit acid. You see here, below seven. And why acid? Because the bacteria do not reproduce in acid environment. But if the pH in this case is going to show you that it's alkaline, like seven or more, that means that it's an indication of presence of bacteria. Bacteria, they make a party when there is an alkaline environment. Okay? So that is one indicator. Another indicator is they are going to check the nitrates. Nitrates. The urine normally have nitrates these nitrates with a are going to be 
used by the bacteria. If there is presence of bacteria, the bacteria is going to transform the nitrates into nitrates with I. And that is another indicator that you have actually uh, um, uh, what you have a uh, uh, urinary tract infection. Okay with that? Then after that, what they are going to do? What, they are going what to is, what is the nitrate converted into? The bacteria. The bacteria okay. is coming, digest that, and the, uh, they make a, basically a poo, uh, like waste product of eating the nitrates and going to turn into nitrates. And that is a positive uh, uh, indicator that it could be an UTI. You okay with that? Yep. They can find some white cells, presence of white cells or not. So, deep stick is positive. So, what they are doing? What they are going to do is to tell you, come back and, and actually tell, tell you, okay, take take this nitro furant furantoin. Furantoin. Moderate and severe. Okay, so take five, 50 milligrams three times a day for seven days. That is basically the, the, the most common treatment, right? Nitro furantoin. All right, so, and then you go home. You go home. And you go home, and then suddenly, after three days, two, three days, they call you back again. And they call you and say, stop the medication. And you're going to use another medication. Why do they do that? Because they make a mistake? No, no, no. All right? This nitrofurantoin, that is an antibiotic that we use for E. coli, they are going to basically be for E. coli. But what happened? When the nurse went to the to the lab, they are going to put the the, the urine. They make a tool, like a tool, like a small uh, wire, and they put it in a petri, in a petri dish. The petri dish is basically here. We have a, a, a medium. This medium is rich in proteins. They rich in carbohydrates, rich in everything. So basically, all the nutrients that the bacteria are going to need in order to grow. And what happened? So the bacteria, what they take the stick here and they seed it like this. All seeded like this. All seeded like this. Whatever is seeding. So they are actually putting the urine over the over the medium. Then after two to three days, colonies are going to colonies are going to grow. The colonies of the bacteria are going to grow. The colonies of bacteria, when they are actually, the, col the colonies of bacteria are big enough, they are going to take it and put a dye that is a coloration of the bacteria. That is called a gram. Gram, 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 gram. Gram is a technique. Gram was a doctor that discovered this a long time ago. And this gram, this gram are going to make a color of the bacteria. So why do we need a color to uh, make color on the bacteria? Because that is going to tell you which type of bacteria we have. So once, the, once they saw in the microscope, the optic microscope, microscopic optic microscope, op optic microscope, they are going to identify the bacteria and they found an E. coli. They found an E. coli. So they don't call you. You, they are going to let you just finish your treatment. But if they find that the bacteria is different from E. coli, for, for example, for example, Staphylococcus, oh my God, these cats are going to kill them. Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus, that is another common bacteria, they are going to call you and say, okay, stop the medication. There is other medication that are going to give it to you. And that is what we call the UA, the urea analysis, urea analysis that is being made by the deep stick. And we have the, the culture that is given in this, this Petri dish in order to identify the bacteria. Are you okay with that? Yep. Yeah. All right, so that is the story of, the, of, the, of this guy. All right. So classification of bacteria species. So, so we are going to have if urine if urine sample 
petri, petri dish with nutritious medium. They are going to incubate between one, two, even three days, and then examinate. So why they do that? Because you cannot find one bacteria in the whole thing. You need to have a population of bacteria that actually you are, you can tell that that is the bacteria who is infecting this person, right? So the normal urine, the normal urine is sterile. So the urine that you have in the urinary bladder right now, there is no bacteria at all. So as soon as they go out from the urethra, that is going to be bacteria already. But there is abnormal growth sometimes that happen. For example, girls. Girls, they retain urine. They retain urine. How they retain urine? They just cross legs and everything is sealed, right? So and the, and the urine in the, in the urinary bladder is not moving. And remember this forever. Any fluid in the body that is not moving is going to proliferate bacteria. Everything in your body is moving. The, even the fluid in your eyes. We were talking about the aqueous humor and all that. So that is moving. It's actually re replacing, recycling. It's always moving. The blood is moving. The, all fluids are being moving all the time. When the, any fluid is not moving, that can pro be prone to the proliferation of bacteria. And when you are crossing legs in order not to pee, to retain urine, the urine is not moving. And that promotes the proliferation of bacteria. You okay with that? All right. So, but the presence the presence of bacteria in the urine is called the bacteriuria. Bacteriuria. Bacteria then can be identified by a special staining. So the dyeing that we was talking, right? So staining. Find out what cell wall and what shape. So we need to identify the type of bacteria in order to have the appropriate antibiotic and how we know that we are going to see that in a few moments all right so i like this picture look at this this is an accelerate one so the bacteria are going to reproduce every 20 minutes so the early detection is if the uti is detected early yeah prognosis the results are going to be okay very good fast right in five days six days seven days you're okay in two three days you start to feel better Right? If there is more severe, you need to have longer time. The recovery is going to take longer. Okay, so col uh, let's talk about the colony. Colony is when after you seeding the urine with the bacteria in the culture, with the medium that they have the nutrition, they're going to grow a colony. So then this colony are going to take it into the, into the gram, gram stain. Gram, gram, gram. Gram is a name, so there's no actually an acronym or something. Gram is a name, okay? Who's a doctor Gram? All right, so let's start. So let's go here. Look at that. This is the Petri dish that we was talking. And here we have the red. Here is the medium. Here is a purple medium, and red is a medium. It's basically sugar, proteins, amino acids, whatever, whatever, right? And this is how they seed. So, for example, the person in this case, I can tell, they were sitting with a tool, the urine like this, or like this, right? Or actually they were sitting like this. Depends how you want to see them, right? Like this, like this, like this, right? So that is the way. So it, that is, it's like you are sitting seeds on the on your on your garden, like a line. The flowers are going to grow as a line, correct? Okay. The, the each each plant is going to be a big colony. Millions and millions of bacteria in that colony. Okay? All right. So then here we have the streptococcus. A streptococcus. Somebody heard about the strep throat? All right. A streptococcus. A streptococcus. So can you see the bacteria here? No. You cannot see the bacteria. You see the colony. It's like you're coming out from, from outer space and you see a city. You see a city from the from the air, but you see the people, you don't see the people. The city is the colony, right? And uh, we are going to make augmentation. We are going to see that. This is the E. coli. So don't think that E. coli need to be like that. It could be seeding whatever you want. The, one, the thing is that you want to have a colony. The Staphylococcus, another bacteria. So let's make an augmentation. This is just basically uh, 10 times augmentation. Let's go, this is uh, actually 
it could be 40 times augmentation. And you can see here, these pieces are here in the microscope, in the microscope. And you can see the cities getting closer to the earth. You're going to get closer, closer, closer. And you will see the colonies, they have these streets, these, these pathways, right? But what is the bacteria? You cannot see the bacteria yet because it's like you are too high in the space. So you see a group of people, but you don't see the people itself to recognize who is who, okay? And let's make an augmentation of 100 times. In 100 times, you will see the individuals. So look at this. Where is the bacteria here? The bacteria is each dot here. This is one bacteria. Okay, sorry. So this is one bacteria, this. This is another bacteria, another bacteria, another bacteria, another bacteria, another bacteria, another bacteria, another bacteria. So each dot is a bacteria. You okay with that? Here, we have the bacteria here. There is one bacteria here, another bacteria here, another bacteria here, another bacteria, bacteria. All of these are bacteria. And here we have bacteria. Who is the bacteria? This is one bacteria, one bacteria, one bacteria one bacteria and the rest are one bacteria okay so now so how you know this is e coli how do you know if this is staphylococcus how do you know streptococcus number one that we are going to see how the organisms are going to have the shape 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 the two basic shapes are going to be coccus sorry coccus Cocus, and the other one are going to be bacilli. Bacilli is cylindrical, right? Cylindrical shape. So here we have that we know that E. coli is bacilli, a bacillar shape. So this is bacilli. And streptococcus, streptococcus, cocus, are going to be like cocus, right? Coconuts. So they're going to be rounded. Can you see rounded, 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 rounded here? And on the other side, the philococcus are going to be rounded, 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 rounded. So how we are going to know which one is a streptococcus and how which one is the philococcus? Because one of the other characteristics besides shape is the organization. How they are going to organize them? How they are going to organize as, as a bacteria? This bacteria is organized in like a chain like a chain and these are going to organize like a cluster like a cluster so you can tell the shape is round round coccus round and is organized in a chain so that is a streptococcus if they're organized in a, as a cluster are going to be coccus staphylococcus okay and the bacilli the bacilli the bacilli are going to be a, a, like a cylindrical. In this case, we have individual, they don't organize. The shape is cylindrical, uh, cylindrical, uh, cylindrical and individual. So they're going to be alone, one by one. And that is how you can tell the bacteria, what bacteria it is. But there is one more component that we need to remember is about the gram stain, gram stain. Talking about the gram stain. Gram stain, I will tell you, gram stain, gram stain are going to be two colors. We have the positive gram and the negative gram. Positive gram and negative gram. We already know that streptococcus and staphylococcus are gram positive. So these are the staphylococcus. And the gram negative is going to be the E. coli. So, but what is the color of gram positive after doing the, the, the staining of, the, of, the, of this colony of bacteria? Positive is going to be blue or purple. And E. coli gram negative are going to be red or pink okay so gram positive and gram negative so 
classifying the bacteria as is this is gram positive or gram negative? What is the shape of the bacteria? Rounded or bacilli? What is the organization of the of the of the bacteria individual uh, as a chain of the cluster? So all these three uh, ways are going to make you know what is the bacteria that is attacking your body. Shape, organization, and actually the staining, the gram. There is other one that is the type of metabolism, aerobic and aerobic. I'm going to mention that later. But basically three of them. Gram, post, gram the organization, and the shape. Okay? You okay with that? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, I want you to... Uh, what color is the uh, gram positive? Blue. What color is the gram negative? Red. 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 So how to remember that? How to remember that? Okay, let's make it very simple, okay? When it's blue, when it's blue, when it's blue, it's, it's like you going to heaven. You're going to heaven. That is positive. That is good. You go to heaven, positive. But if you go to hell, you're going to find fire and red. Right? So if you go into hell, that is negative. You okay with that? Easy to remember or not? So yeah. what is negative? The fire, red or pink. What is the grand positive? Oh, the sky, the heaven, right? Positive, blue. You can, you can say purple too, saying that positive P is purple P. Easy or not? You okay with that? Yeah. All right, so uh, Marcel. Oh my God, it's one series. Oh my God, always, why am why I suffering always with the time? Uh, okay. All right, so let's make it simple. All right, so here we have um, Marcel, which castle you would like to feel more protect? This or this? A or B? A. A, right? Why? Because A, they have one wall and we have another wall here, correct? Two walls. Yes. It's a double wall. But this B is only one wall. Only one wall. Okay? So, conclusion here. The, ground, the, the wall, they have one wall, basically are the gram positive. And uh, have the ones who have double wall are going to be the gram negative. You okay with that? So, conclusion the gram negative are more harder to kill, are more aggressive. They is, resist more to antibiotics. So, that is the gram negative. Who are more dangerous? The gram negative. You okay with that? Gram positive are dangerous too. Right? Staphylococcus, streptococcus are very dangerous. But more dangerous, just to imagine how dangerous could be the gram negative, are going to be much more dangerous than the gram positive because they can survive better. They are more stronger. Let's put it that way. Why? Because they have literally, they have a double cell wall. Double, double, double. Besides the cytoplasmatic membrane. Cytoplasmatic membrane is here. Cytoplasmatic membrane is here inside. Uh, 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 outside, we have the cell wall. We have one cell wall in the positive, but we have two cell walls in the gram negative. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. All right. So there's some graphic there just to show you there some example here. All right. So this is the gram negative. You see the wall of the gram positive are more simple, gram positive. And this is gram negative. So it's much more elaborate than gram negative. Okay? All right. So this is the staining, the gram, the gram post, the gram staining. So there is a process. I'm not going to ask, of course, apply, apply crystal violet, apply iodine, then apply alcohol, dry with a bounce, bounce, bounce uh, a burner, and then apply the application of suffering, and then they are going to appear. You look in the microscope, and you will see red versus blue. The first thing you're going to check is gram, gram positive or gram negative. Then you will say, oh, this is cocos or bacilli. Okay, this is a chain, a singular 
or it's going to be like a cluster and you have the, your diagnosis. I give you a simplified because there's more elaboration, but knowing this, basically that is the big Christmas tree. The decorations are coming later, but you don't need that. So you just need to know gram, shape, and organization. That is the conclusion about that. So here we have gram positive, we have purple or blue, gram negative are going to be a pink or red, all right? So here, for example, just to give you an example, there is other, other type of bacteria. This is the spirillus. Spirillus, why? Because the bacteria is like a, a, a spiral, and that is the trepo, uh, treponema pallidum, syphilis. We have here, this coccus is round and it's red, so it's gram negative, and this is coccus, but it's diplococcus, because it's having two coccus together. That is the gonorrhea. Gonococcus gonorrhea or blenorrhagia. So that is the gonococcus. Okay, for example. All right. So that's it. So here we have uh, we have this is what is this? Round, right? Chain and what? And blue. This is round two and red and this is round cluster and blue so that means that this is round coccus cluster staphylo blue gram positive so staphylococcus is a gram positive here we have in a chain a streptococcus we have why because it's in a chain the organization the shape is round and blue means positive. So Staphylococcus and Streptococcus are gram positive. And here we have a Diplococcus, Diplococcus, that is basically the, actually, a Diplococcus, or, uh, it's, it's Diplococcus, it's not Diplobacillus. It's Diplococcus, and it's the gonorrhea. Okay? So now is that. So that is how that is going to take two, three, two, three days. Now, how to take the antibiotic? Another time. That is another story. Unless you want to have extra time after two o'clock, I will tell you. But definitely, we have other classification that is according to the metabolism. Very simple metabolism. In addition of the color, the shape, and the organization, we mentioned about the metabolism. What is this metabolism? We have bacteria they, they, that they need oxygen to survive. They need oxygen. When they need oxygen, they are going to be called aerobic, aerobic, aerobic. When they don't need oxygen, are going to be anaerobic. Obligate anaerobic means that that they need they don't they don't need to have not even one molecule of oxygen because oxygen is going to inhibit the cell division. So aerobic, aerobic, you need to have an environment with oxygen. If they have low oxygen, they are not growing. Anaerobic. They need to grow with the presence without oxygen. I mean, no oxygen in the environment. If you have a little bit of oxygen, they are not going to, to grow. This aerobic can be basically gram positive. Just to mention, I'm not going to ask that. An aerobic can be gram positive and gram negative. Obligate and aerobic are going to be mostly gram negative. So, but at this moment, the, to recap here, the only thing I want you to know is that they have. Uh, basically aerobic, anaerobic, aerobic, anaerobic, period. That's it. Aerobic, anaerobic. You okay with that? Yep. Okay. So to finish this part, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, the flora. What time is it, please? One thirty-seven. Okay. So I think we have plenty, uh, not plenty time, but we have time. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the flora. The flora, and somebody know heard about the C. diff, Clostridium C. diff. You heard probably C. diff. Yes. C. diff, right? What is C. diff? It's a, a diarrhea, correct? Yeah, it's an infection that causes diarrhea. And the smell is very foul smell, right? And it's greenish, right? 
and that is going to be PPE, right? Personal protection equipment, right? In this case, you're going to use gloves and wash with soap. No sanitizer, soap. And that is going to uh, isolate the patient, okay? So, see this. And we are going to talk about that, okay? We can give we you that? All right. Yeah. All right. So, let's do the big graphic here. All right. So, tell me what I'm drawing. Colon. Very good. The pedix, correct? All right, so I don't like this, sorry. No, it's... Okay, this is the appendix. All right, so it's a little bit kind of slanted, but anyhow, all right. So this is the column. Colon, 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 colon. This is the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, colon sigmoides, and the rectum, the pet, and the pelvis. Okay? Oh, can you please give me a second? This is from the school. Can you give me a second, please? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so let's keep going. All right, so here we have our column, right? Sorry for that, huh? Thank you for that. Hello, are we here? Yeah, you're good. Yes, okay. okay, okay, listen to this, please, okay? This is so important. What do we have in the column? In the column, we have the good bacteria. Good bacteria. What is means good bacteria? This, why is good bacteria? The bacteria is good. We can train the bacteria like a dog. No, you cannot do it, right? So why the bacteria behave spontaneously good, right? I will tell you. So here in the colon, we have different bacteria. Different bacteria. Different bacteria. Remember, I was, meantime, I'm doing this. I want just to tell you that the 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 functions of the small intestine, a small intestine is the absorption of nutrients. But the function of the colon is going to be the absorption of the of just water, water and fluids. Okay. Why is that? Because the 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 what the colon, the in, small intestine are going to already absorb all the nutrients. So the remnants are going to be just water. So that's why the main function of the colon is to reabsorb water. You okay with that? Yeah. Yep. All right. So and here we have I'm drawing here. See, like a collage. It looks like it's like a New Year or whatever you want. We. All right. So we have what I'm trying to represent here. These guys are the bacteria. These guys are the bacteria. All these guys are the bacteria. Sorry, it's just me. Okay, so, uh, all right, so all these are bacteria. All right, so these bacteria are going to be 
This bacteria, listen to this, this bacteria, we have 400 different species of bacteria. So what does it mean? I'm not saying that we have 400 bacteria. We have 400 different population of different species of bacteria. You okay with that? Okay. Yeah. So this actually are going to, these bacteria are going to compete, compete for space and food, for nutrients. They are going to compete. So they are actually like an ecology, ecologically imbalance, balance, balance. They have, they found the balance. It's like, for example, think about Yellowstone. Yellowstone, Yellowstone, are going to be a, ba a balanced population of animals. There is not a lot of wolves, a few wolves, a few wolves. There is some bears, some deers, right? Now, so all, now the population maintained in the same number. None of them are going to reproduce more than others. None of them are going because the population is under a balance. Be okay with that? Yes. So yep. when you are thinking about the, the good bacteria in the colon, think about the Yellowstone. Yellowstone, right? Yellowstone is, everything is under balance, okay? Okay? So none of them are going to reproduce more than others. None of them are going to eat more than others because the balance is already established in the colon. So they say, oh, I'm going to reproduce more. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You cannot reproduce. Why? Because they don't have enough food for actually have the energy. So everything is distributed equally for all these 400 different bacteria. You okay with that? Here. Yes. So that means that none of these species are going to have a bigger number of bacteria that produce a disease or invasion. Nice or no? Got it. Okay, everybody got it? Yes. Oh, oh, are you yeah. there? Okay, excellent. All right, so, so, but how and why we have these guys in our colon? There is actually a word that are going to be called the symbiosis. Symbiosis. You can say a symbiotic activity. Symbio symbiotic activity. Symbiotic, well, okay, just correct me if I pronounce wrong, okay? Symbiotic or symbiotic activity is the symbiosis. What is symbiosis? Symbiosis is a mutual cooperation. What is the mutual cooperation? Human and bacteria. They are going to cooperate to each other. Okay, so kind of strange. How they can, I can help the bacteria and the help and bacteria can help me. All right, I will tell you now. So. The intestine, and that's what I mentioned that, the, 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 the intestine are going to make all the, small intestine are going to make all the absorptions of the nutrients. The one who cannot be absorbed, and this is class number two of bioscience, is the cellulose. Cellulose, remember the cellulose? Yep. The cellulose, what is the cellulose? Cellulose is a carbohydrate, is a polysaccharide, polysaccharide that is actually the dietary fiber, or you can call fiber only, fiber. Who is the fiber? The vegetables, vegetables and fruits. And what happened with these cellulose or fiber that is not digestible, it's undigestible. They cannot be digest. What means digestion? Digestion means to break down in order to make it in small molecules to be absorbed. But undigestible means they cannot break it down. So what happened with the cellulose? The cellulose is passing through the small intestine and is getting into the large intestine. This is the cellulose. Cellulose, cellulose, whatever you use cellulose, fiber. So they are not digested by, the, by, by your body. So what is happening now? Who can digest? The bacteria. The bacteria is used this as a food. So that's why we are going to, help the, the poor bacteria. They are, we are going to provide the food for these bacteria. These bacteria are going to take the fiber as 
as a source of food. Of food. You okay with that? Okay. Now, but where is the symbiosis here? All right, so we are helping these guys. We are helping these guys. But how actually, let me see. Uh, I'm going to put, on, uh, no, I don't want to, uh, what color? Okay, green. All right, so what they're giving, what, how the bacteria is helping us. Remember, I was telling you at the beginning, at the very beginning, you and I, we are like a, like a bacteria. You, you eat, you pee, you poo, you fart, you, you reproduce, you grow, you do everything, right? All right. So when they eat the, when they, the, this bacteria is going to eat the fiber, the fiber is going to be having a waste product like the poo, right? And this production is going to be after the bacteria eat the fiber, the bacteria is going to provide or secrete vitamin K, vitamin K and vitamin, vitamin seven. That is the biotin, biotin, vitamin K and the biotin, vitamin K. The most important is the vitamin K. So as remember, vitamin, biotin is vitamin B7. B7, sorry, it's B7, B7. Biotin is basically used to produce uh, proteins, neurotransmitters, and basically to help because, you know, vitamins are coenzymes, cooperation with the enzymes. And this biotin is going to help to produce basically ATPs. All the reactions in the Krebs cycle are going to need biotin. All right, so that is important. But vitamin K is the what most of the exams are talking about. Vitamin K is actually the coagulation, coagulation vitamin. I put it with K because originally the, uh, the Germans was discovered that they, they don't write coagulation with C, they write coagulation with K. So that's why it's coming the name coagulation. So uh, German is very strong in language, right? You know, coagulation. They don't say coagulation, they coagulation, okay? So vitamin K, you okay with that? And that is the symbiosis, is the mutual help between the normal, what we call flora, flora, or we call in this case, gut flora. That is what I want you to remember, the gut flora. You okay with that? Yes. All right, so, but we don't have flora only in the intestines. We have flora in your skin. You have flora in your eyes. You have flora in your hair. You have flora in your mouth. You have flora in the lining of the respiratory tract. You have flora on the genital area. All are, we are covered by flora. And what is flora? Flora is the good bacteria. Is the good bacteria. When some bacteria that is enemy trying to invade you, they are going to be some number of bacteria, few number of bacteria. So the flora of the skin has said, okay, so you don't belong to us. You don't belong here. So we are going to kill you because we are more numerous good bacteria versus one or two or three or four, five bacteria, bad bacteria. So that flora is going to protect you from infections as well. Okay? So just remember on the eye, the conjunctiva, the genitals, the skin, the nails, the hair, your mouth, your nose, everything is covered by my book of good bacteria. Do you okay with that? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. What time is it, please? Okay. I'm 10 minutes. Okay. So saying that, it looks like I'm, okay, it's crazy graphic, right? All right. So let's, so you already know what is colon, what is symbiosis. Oh, God. I know I need to put out. Symbiosis, you know what is the flora, you know what is the biotin, bi vitamin B7. Okay. Uh, I cannot delete this. No. Okay. Color. Okay. So we already know all this, what we was mentioning. And now we are going to talk about the CD. Okay, sorry, I need just to finish this. Uh, please, please. All 
All right, so we are good. So now, what happened? What happened with the CD? Okay. All right, so now, here we have the column with all these bacteria, right? All these bacteria, and these bacteria are going to uh, do the abdominal flora. So we have 400 different species of bacteria. One, one of this group of bacteria is called the Clostridium difficile. With one L. All called the C. diff. This bacteria is special. Uh, okay, so do you have Clostridium difficile right now? Yes, probably yes, because only, well, not necessary. only 15% of you and I, between you and I, 15% of us, we have this Clostridium difficile that is, is a good bacteria. It's good bacteria. Why? Because this Clostridium difficile is, is, is go, going to cohabitate with the other bacteria, so everybody is in balance. So what happened? What is the problem with the C. diff? The C. diff, is, the problem is that when you take, for example, some antibiotic, antibiotic that we was talking before, antibiotic, this antibiotic is going to kill bacteria. But this antibiotic do not differentiate between the good and the bad bacteria. Yes, good bacteria. So the good bacteria, the bad bacteria, the bad bacteria is going to be killed by this antibiotic as well the good bacteria. So the good bacteria, let's kill these fibers, these actually the cellulose that we was mentioned. And guess what? The bacteria, the antibiotic is going to start killing the bad bacteria and the good bacteria. They are going to start killing the good bacteria. So the good bacteria are going to be destroyed bit by bit, bit by bit. And, and the Clostridium difficile start to say, oh my God, everybody is being killed. Eh, less and less, less and less, less and less, less and less. So the balance of the Yellowstone is gone. The all good times are gone. So everybody is dying, except the Clostridium difficile. Why except the Clostridium difficile? Why accept the Clostridium difficile? Because the Clostridium difficile have a mechanism of defense. What is this mechanism of defense? I go into the, we have here, see? It's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. All these guys gone. So we have just Clostridium difficile. So I'm going to make one, how the Clostridium difficile survive? Because the Clostridium difficile, I'm going to make a draw like this, okay? So just, uh, just to make it bigger, just, just to demonstrate. So this is the Clostridium difficile, okay? The Clostridium difficile. This is the CD. And the CD, they say, oh my God, everybody is dying. Okay, I need to do something. And what is doing the Clostridium difficile? The Clostridium difficile is going to cover himself by a capsule. These are going to cover. And what is doing the Clostridium difficile? They are going to go to sleep. They're going to sleep until every, every until the antibiotic of the danger is gone. So once the antibiotic is gone and the medium is appropriate for the uh, for the, for the bacteria, the bacteria start to release this endospore or this cover. The bacteria, the Clostridium difficile, is actually awake again. And you see, oh my God, there is nobody here. Oh God, all the space is for me. All the food is for me. I don't have any competition. And now I start to reproduce and make parties every day and make a lot of Clostridium difficile. At the end, what you're going to have, because there is no competition, everything is going to be CD. Everything is going to see. And there are no stop multiplying because there is no competition. They are going to increase 
very much the number of these bacteria, and they are going to attack the mucus of the intestine. Big colonies of the intestine of Clostridium difficile. And then what happened? They produce inflammation, they produce increase of peristalsis of the intestine, and because this is where we absorb water, if you have peristalsis, you give less time to the colon to absorb water. So what happened? Diarrhea. You okay with that? Now, let's give a names to this. This is the bacteria, and what I was mentioned, that you have a cover. This cover of capsule is called the endospore. And when they actually going to multiply, they get rid of the endospore. Endospore is when they are sleeping, when they are in danger. Then endospore, don't forget about that name, and write it down, question for the exam. So when the danger is gone, the endospore disappear, and they are going to start dividing, and dividing, and dividing. And this division is called the sporulation. All right, so we okay with that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good, right? All right, so let's keep going. All right, so we okay with that? We okay? We okay? This is all the all the actresses and actors, whatever. So let's do that. All right, this. Which of the following will not cause Clostridium difficile to relate? So this is something I didn't teach yet, but I'm going to use as a as a teaching. Yeah. All right, so in this case, what is happening here? When the bacteria, not because listen to this, not all bacteria are going to produce the sporulation. Sporulation involves the endospore, right? Sporulation is the action of dividing. The endospore is what to do to protect himself with the end is produce the endospore. Okay. And when the bacteria find find some danger agents in the environment, like, for example, high temperature. They are going to, if they are able, if they are able to produce uh, uh, sporulation, they will do a sporulation. But if not, they will die. Not all bacteria are going to have a sporulation. We have Clostridium difficile, Clostridium botulinum, Clostridium tetani, Clostridium uh, perfringes. We have different, different uh, bacteria. Not all of them are able to sporulate, okay? So if you have high temperature, the bacteria is going to sporulate, endospore. Low pH, the same thing. Low pH are going to basically, remember, bacteria hate acid. Bacteria hate acid, okay? High pressures, dehydration. The only thing I want to ask you related to actually courses are going to be high temperature and low pH low pH. So, for example, when you have your blood with metabolic acidosis, okay, or alkalosis, sorry, alkalosis, you have, uh, you, you can have actually infection. So, low pH means acid. So, that is actually to, uh, uh, are going to pr promote the esporulation of the bacteria that can produce esporulation, not all of them. All the rest are going to die. So temperature and pH, that is the only thing I want you to remember. All right, so here we have, uh, all right, so normal flora, good bacteria in the GI tract, you can call very fast gut flora. Gut flora, G-U-T, gut flora. Respiratory tract, mouth, nose, skin, mucosas, okay? Uh, they are going to produce vitamin K and biotin. Biotin is the vitamin B7. B7, B as a boy, B7, produce, uh, promote, coincide for, produce ATPs. Symbiotic relationship is a mutual beneficial relationship between two organisms, good bacteria and human body, in which they help each other to survive. We have the host parasite relationship. Parasi so, symbiosis is the opposite of parasite. Symbiosis is when you have a mutual cooperation, but parasite is only one 
make or have a benefit. Parasites, ascaris, ancylostoma, strongyloides, uh, immunoleptis, whatever, taenia solions, aginata, whatever, all trichinella, all of these worms are going to be parasites. They actually taking your nutrients and you don't have any benefit from them. You okay with that? Yep. And the last one is the opportunistic pat pathogens. Opportunistic pathogens are going to be, when you have antibiotic therapy, or when you have, write down this, or you are too young, when you have opportunistic infections. Opportunistic infections, opportunistic infections. High risk, opportunistic infections, high risk, very young. Very old. Malnourishment. Chemotherapy or radiotherapy, chemo radiotherapy, people with cancer. So, on all these situations, the immune system is down. Immune system is down. When the immune system is down, means there is no enzyme because enzymes are proteins and malnourishment, right? The white cells are produced by the bone marrow. When you have chemotherapy, radiotherapy, they are going to be destroyed. Antibiotic therapy, what is going to happen? Antibiotic therapy are going to destroy the normal flora. So these are going to, can affect the infection of other organisms, especially fungal infections. Opportunistic infections are those who, bacteria or fungus that are waiting until your immune system is very low in order to attack. If you are malnourished, you can have infections very easy, right? Opportunistic infection. One simple one, trash. You know what is trash? Trash, T-H-R-U-S-H. Trash is the white on the mouth, correct? On the tongue. That is actually a fungus. And this fungus, just to finish, is going to be called the fungus It's the same fungal infection. This case is going to be an opportunistic infection that is actually the trash. And this trash is the candida albicans. Albicans means white. Candida albicans. That is what is called opportunistic infection. And I tell you which cases can be happening. Okay, guys. So I would like to do more of the cell phones, but uh, yeah, time is is passing very fast, right? Tell me, how was the class for you, Marilyn? Please. It was a good class. Thank you, Doctor Hugh. Thank you. All right. So I'm afraid. Uh, Erin, are you there? Erin, he can text, I guess, but he cannot communicate. Okay, I will talk to him. Uh, Miss o, o, what is how is the class today? Tell me, please. Um, class is good, but for the what this um this microbiology, this is the first time I am learning this, so I'm to read through a lot. But you like it or no? You understood or no? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I understand. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Miss Marcel, please. Class was good, Dr. Chi. Um, you went over everything really well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Daniel. Uh, class was awesome. Um, first time I've linked a lot of stuff with my clinical experience with the actual bioscience and stuff yeah so the why of things right why is this yeah. why is that excellent so i'm so glad on that i mean the sensation will be uh, i think very very nice 
Oh, Mr. Erin. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Any comment about the class, please? The text appears very fast, huh? <laughs> Mr. Erin, well, I don't know what, what, what we do with, with Mr. Erin. What we should do uh, with, oh, oh, tell me, what, do, what I should do with, uh, with Erin? What we should do? Uh oh, what do you think? Me? Yeah. No, I'm just asking, yes, that's okay. Okay, Mr. Erin, so if you need to tell me something, just let me know, please. I know you're falling down asleep for some reason, or you are not yourself at this time, but if something I can help you, please let me know, okay? Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, Daniel, uh, just help me with that. Is there something I can do? Let me know, please. I don't know what is going on. Okay, thank you. If that is possible. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow is, tomorrow is Tuesday, right? All right. So, tomorrow at what time? Nine, nine o'clock? Yes, nine o'clock, right? So, nine yes, what? 9.15, yes. All right, so... 9.15 a.m. or p.m., Dr. G? Uh, p.m., p.m., p.m. P.m., okay. I didn't, I didn't put p.m.? You did. Oh, yeah, okay. It's p.m. means, means oh, oh. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to stay until the end. If somebody wants to talk to me, and thank you so much. I'm going to cut the, the recording, stop recording, and I will see you next time. Muchas gracias. Mm -hmm.